they want to talk about it on camera. And they saw other people, like, second guess me. You didn't understand. But I'm not doing anything wrong. Get over it. Fuck you. I love you. I feel like you just kind of copped out of the question. That's a word. And I'll do that as many times as I have to. Well, I'll be in fast enough. Does that sound like So you get the idea, right? Couples asking each other questions, you shock this, and as we're shooting this, we realize that what we built this process is almost, there's a story with every couple. And as long as you, and it doesn't have to be a special romantic, it can be brothers, it can be ex-lovers, it can be anything, um, colleagues, if you ask the right questions, you'll, you can find that story. You can find that source of conflict where they both come when they get into it. So let me show you. So one thing here. I'm speaking now from a filmmaker's experience, right? Because ultimately you see this and like, oh, great, why don't we put this on YouTube? Why don't we do that? Clearly that's not enough. Like, that's not the full experience. That, you know, I, I think what's genius is when function, what you're saying, meets how you say it, the form. When the form and function meet, then you've got something. We have a function here, you can have this experience, but that's not enough. How do you take it into the form? How do you manipulate the form such that what you're saying matches how you say it? And I'll get to that point because that's the main thing. Yeah, but I want to show you the core content, which is going to set like this. you see how that gets <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord, oh, this is great. How do I live with the sex questions? I'm going to do that sex you've ever had. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you sure that's what the question is? Do I have to answer that? Oh, Okay. Yes, right? Yeah, okay, cool. We both do it. I have to be honest and say yes when we talk about it before. Yeah. Persuasion, 
uh, race up here, right? And you can so you get a kind of wide spectrum of different relationships. And what I find interesting in filmmaking is that there's like a great deal of value here in science. I like usually know like story, 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 like next week, next week, like, but where it's like, we have like, but and it's crazy how the pants spread. I mean, we're shooting a film in the Western Slope of Colorado with cowboys who spent most of the cow time in cow camp, and this guy saw the piece with his wife, played it as a cowboy, and loved it, and his wife said, you know what, this is great, this is reality, it's not reality, real world, it's reality of feeling. Let me show you this piece. I think, I think this piece gives an example of that. Why are you going to miss me after high school?
is it's like a more traditional filmmaker. When this, you know, a year ago, someone came and said, hey, go ask, we can talk about this subject, kind of like how we're all changing. And I this is, you know, how relationships are changing, how emotional experiences of life are changing. I was like, oh yeah, that's interesting to document it, because that's but you know what, that is not the best way to tell this story. The best way to tell this story is to create a brand and these experiences, right? And that's like the thing, but that launched me into this new world of like creating experiences, and I'm used to like creating these kind of things, and making experiences was like kind of for me to get out of, into a new rhythm, into a new thing that I'm, I had to learn a lot from. Um, and part of that, I think we talked about two things. One is just in terms of like the skill levels of the was cutting the pieces for, and we have a customized film on there. Cutting content for a customized film is totally different than cutting content for the back kind of interaction you just saw between the two couples. It's totally different than cutting like a compilation of like my the best sex you ever had. So not only like thinking here, we knew we had to make a different experience that match this kind of emotional thing, energy that they have between them and try to place you in that and not only place you in that, but for you to have that experience at home in your own life. We knew that it had to reach beyond the screen and not just live with this experience by an experience that would be watching it, but it had to reach into it. And in order to do that, I had to stretch out and experience different things in the way we cut pieces, you know, in the way that we thought of building it. And that is something that like, I didn't really even know how to do. So I went with the two smartest people that we were in the club, we stayed together with, which is Nathan Phillips and June. And every time I go see it, it's like, blow my mind. Like, oh. Like, I knew how to go in that direction. I know I, and Brian Cobb too, blew my mind. So it's like, okay, I mean, I know what I'm capable of, but I, but I know it's not enough. I have to find the people who can make it enough, who can like, push it and make it louder, and I find them on that side. It's like being a snake in skin, and you have to like, shed the skin. The thing I learned personally, which is amazing, last week we did round 2.0, we continued to develop a domain on a relationship genome project. It's not just couples, but ex lovers brothers, sisters, siblings, you know, father, daughters, mother, sons, deaf couples. And we're watching that, and just on a personal level, the thing I've learned, Grace, learn a room treatment. And every time we're in a room, I meet these people, we set up, and they'll talk about it. 45 minutes, an hour and a half. And all I do is watch. I'm in the middle, and I really don't know what's happening. Because I'm, again, looking at the profile. I don't know what's happening. And Julia's on one camera, she sees one thing, she doesn't know what's going to happen on the other side. We don't really know what's happening until we see the trip or the things. But all I know is that like our hearts are built to love. They're like encased in our own bodies and security and our own social experience. And like all these hearts, like even if they're deaf and they can't hear, they're just trying to love. Even if they're like, regardless of sexual persuasion or whatever, like, and the social pressure, like, hearts just want to love. And like, we are just, every time we film, we're like, at all. That's kind of what I learned personally with, like, having respect for that. But coming back to the idea of, like, how do we function naturally? How do we, we have this, you see the content here. How do we create the experience so that that is transferred into your life? Not just simply watching, but that's not enough. That's not interesting anymore, in my opinion. Like, we wanted to, like, how do we put that into your life so that you are not only the low mood emotion by watching, but how do you move by speaking to your partners in your life? How do you play that part? So, how do you create that experience? It's lubrication. Um, the joke that I think is watching movies in a room full of human beings based on the fact that they've been posting on the internet. So if you thought I'm about to give him and his team a round of applause for like the beautiful movie stuff, you could do so now if you felt like it. <laughs> and I'm not talking if you want to give a round of applause. It's fine too. Um, the, so I think the point about form is really important because the content is beautiful, the content is powerful, and it's nuanced. Uh, but then you have the internet, and nuance and subtle and beautiful are words that don't normally correlate to really successful internet content. Um, so I'm thinking kind of about a uh, framing concept that informed the way we built this interactive experience, um, which is based on the finest uh, American film ever created. It was in 1988. Um, it's an action film. Does anyone have any guesses as to what that film is? Die Hard. There you go. Um, Die Hard. Uh, 
starring Bruce Willis and Detective John McClane. John McClane lives uh, in New York City. He's there visiting his exchange wife in Los Angeles. It's a Christmas party in the Dr. Tony Tower. And John McClane is a superhero. What is John McClane's superpower? He is a detective from New York. What is his superpower? Based on the top, I'm going to skip. I'm going to tell you what it is. His superpower is that he knows how to use the building that he's in, like an architect, and not like someone that works there. When John McCain gets through the Knock of Tony Towers, he doesn't walk through the door and he shoots through a wall. Glass is not something you see through. Glass is a weapon. And yes, I know that they shoot glass, but it's all part of the metaphor. Um, when he uses the elevator, he rides on top of the elevator, puts the dead body inside of it, and he uses it as a spectacle to win the mental wars fighting the bad guys. And that's how we like to think about the internet. Um, and we like to try to navigate the Knock of Tony space is what we call it. Um, because when you create content like this, you need to find a unique entry point. You can't walk in the front door. You have to fall through the middle of the ceiling and surprise everyone. Um, because now more than ever, it's not just about the story. It's about the way you tell it. And a lot of the time, the simplest stories succeed the best. These are relationships. We know how they work. So we can actually explore the way that we're interacting with and viewing them and come up with a really interesting form factor, which is the website. Um, and now, I'm just going to give you a side to it, but really quickly, one other thing is correlates to how um, at Noise we work with our creative technologists and all those guys, is I'm a writer, I'm not a technology guy, and my job in this relationship, as Intel has its job in this relationship in terms of how we built it, is to create a problem for the technology guys to solve. Not to walk in and be like, hey, we want a website that makes it so you can create a documentary. We want to say it's impossible to be a part of a conversation. How can you fix that? And what they do is create a really amazing interaction. This is not the best website it could have been, but it is the best experience, um, we think. Pause for 30 seconds of awkward computer failing. Um, sorry. All right. <laughs> uh, um, well, yeah. It's really the only important entertainment happening in America right now, other than the end of us. <laughs> um, all right. So, the internet's not working. Is there anyone here who can help me? And let's take a cue from the end by acknowledging that this is weird and we're all in a room together and you guys are all looking at me. So, feel free to talk amongst yourselves, ask me questions, uh, do a little time step. All right, here we go. I think it's working. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we it down. Um, so uh, there's four sections of the website. Basically what we want to do is create this experience. There you go. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get it right. The end, the brief for the end is that it's two people sitting in two chairs, a bench in between them. There's an audience and then a question. We boil it down to that is the core experience. So when we created the website, we knew that we had an audience that would impact the documentary so that no one was past the viewing experience, but their participation would actually change the content and put them somehow in the draft of the Funny story about being a group creative director. Uh, don't use computers because we're processing uh, forces you to make a linear man. Could never have made this using Microsoft Word. Um, that was actually way better than that was a pretty good insight though. Um, so how many of you guys are like dev tech people? And how dev tech? How many of you guys are like traditional media storytellers? How many of you are single? <laughs> cool, there's a single gentleman in the back going up here. Um, there's going to be a mingle uh, section after this, section four of the end of the US. Um, yeah. Oh, the name is uh, whether it's you or me, right? And her, uh, them, and those guys. There's one thing that every couple shares, and that's the end. 
Um, and one thing I think that Topaz did that is really amazing is that it defined couples by people who find themselves as couples. So the rules of the relationship were out the window. Um, so this is unique kind of um, because you're getting advice and kind of getting insight into love and relationships from people who maybe you wouldn't normally do so. I watched this with my Scottish mother-in-law and the transgender gentleman said something. She's like, ah, I know exactly how he feels. And like normally if I was like, hey, I have a transgender gentleman friend and he'd love to share some inside of love, she maybe wouldn't quite have swallowed that so easily. And I think that this does a kind of interesting job of disrupting the way we watch the content. We do it all on our phones. By the way, I assume so this is going to happen before I got here. Yeah, do you guys have any questions? Yeah? How did you recruit from? How did you find the people? Like, what was that? What is that is totally a Julia question. Um, Julia, the amazing producer, cast all the people in the films. Do you want to answer that? Cool. So it's a mix of reaching out to personal numbers at first because we always have people who know people who know people as viewers. And um, the next step was like obviously at some point you reach limit, so you have to reach out beyond your own personal and what you used to. So I just started looking into like all types of groups of Facebook, Twitter, meetup.com, etc. And then like going to events, meeting people, talking to people because nobody's gonna be like, sure, I'm gonna go up on this thing and like pour my heart out and soul and like. You know, you're afraid you're going to get judged, especially if you're different, quote unquote. So it was a lot of like just meeting people face to face and talking, like, telling them about the point of the project. And I, I also think that what was valuable is that we pretty much took anybody who would be in it, right? It wasn't like cast a certain because none of people really opened themselves up emotionally to be recorded. But what we found is that in this process, like pretty much every couple has a story. If you ask the right questions, there's content there. I, um, I suppose then you have probably like let's say three or four more times of like the diversity of couples, so that way you can just quickly show the uh, the value and the good part people. No, we we recruited we recruited Julia for the whole group before we ever went public because they had their own material edited. So people came out really because of the relationship she was able to build with them and the trust that she was able to build. So it's really a testament to her. Skills. Uh, relationships. Um, I'm not going to go back to the beginning of the website, but I will say one quick thing. Um, Mikhail Klein, I was who designed the website. Um, the animation all comes from the NAP project, which is a mostly free website that makes icons. And one thing that was a real challenge was making it beautiful in a simple way, in the same way that the films are very simple and stripped down and kind of using the design aesthetic that they had come that started with and then finding a minimal way to bring it to life. And that's one example of how this website is not supposed to look super expensive. It's supposed to look really kind of minimal. Um, the other thing I'll be real quick about it is the setup. There's no instructions. You gotta have the experience animation, trailer, and now we'll create a customized documentary film about the way you experience love and relationship. Get started. What an exciting and coming call to action. Um, okay, let's create an identity and we can uh, answer these questions as if we're a single person. Okay? Our name is Donna. We're 34 years old. We've just got out of a long term relationship. We've used Tinder like four times. We've gone home with guys twice. Um, we have no kids and we're looking to fall in love. Okay? Uh, which would you rather talk about? Your feelings or your job, Donna? Feelings. 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 Um, I'm going to say one thing about the way that these questions are written because now we're getting into the programming side of things. Um, there's not a lot of complexity. This is a binary relationship, and we did our best to write things so that it's ones and zeros. It's either this or it's that thing. Um, we could have constructed it, and Ricky could talk to you about this later, with something that's called more of like a floating point thing. It could have been a lot more nuanced. 
um, a lot more specific about the type of person you are and the way we tag things. But we intentionally didn't do that because that's not how conversations work. When you break it down to something, with someone you don't know exactly what they're feeling and what motivates them, you have to kind of figure it out. And we wanted to maintain that feeling. Um, shit, I think you're coming to trust, but that's probably what you're going to say. Um, what would you like to do about the past? Forget it or remember it? Assembles these videos. 
um, was talking to Chris, and actually, he was really advocating for the edit to be seamless, as the filmmakers were, and found a way to get Chris edited to the frame so that these things would get assembled, because actually getting two video players, two video clips, to play next to each other seamlessly is like super duper hard, right? Yes. So, um, that actually was an interesting conversation because we had a filmmaker building the actual programming um, and informed the way that the films were constructed on the set. So, just the thing with those customized films, that every, if you play a second time, you get different questions. So every time you play, there's, 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 those, that customized film is like a snowflake. If you play six times, 20 times, you won't get the same cut. It's like a customized uh, training portion for or reflect your relationship, so it's unique to you. Any kind of portrait that you're doing. <laughs> um, and one last thing too, in terms of like making this stuff, um, a lot of people that worked on the site, uh, or critiquing it for festivals or whatever, were like, really think that it should be more specific, right? I want to watch the video and know what it's about me, but if you look at the hundreds of comments on Reddit, no one says that. Because, again, the user starts from the animation, and the animation to them is just as impactful as the trailer, as the custom cut. So, I think as the maker of this stuff, it's really hard um, to step through the entire thing and remember that the whole thing is a film. From the moment you open the door well, to the moment you close it, um, it's not just that little thing we recognize as a movie. Um, yep. So, what, what was the motivation? I think the the films came first, and I think there's two answers, and we can probably get into this more in depth. But I don't part of the game. Um, but to answer quickly, I think it's all about the triptych. The power of shooting in triptych, you see their faces. That's what makes this amazing and a much richer experience than like first kiss. Is like hot people getting horny. This is like. This dude's face while he listens to his wife tell him that he's not the best sex he's ever had, and we wanted to create an interactive experience so the viewer could go even deeper into that. Um, so the last part, um, and we don't have to go through the whole game, but is uh, a game, and the next iteration of this might be a mobile device where it happens to your phone. So you can hand your phone back and forth, but ultimately you can hand your laptop back and forth. There's some rules, and then you actually go back and forth with these sweet color coded cards play at home with your partner. Make sense? You can all do it later at the bar. Um, so now, um, oh, well, I'll talk about kind of our dream stuff real quick. Um, the first couple of weeks, we had almost 3 million visitors. Um, average length of stay was like 90 seconds, which is pretty insane. Uh, and then some people, if you look, were spending the evening on it uh, with their partner. If you got to the front page of Reddit, which obviously was a big driver of the traffic, um, and then we had um, a lot of kind of repeat visitors and stuff, so that the way people use this, I think, is more, uh, a lot more human than something that you're just going to want to watch once. And that's not just refreshing the content, I think it's the insight that those people kind of give into their relationships. 145 countries. Um, created those 3 million hits. So it was definitely kind of a global situation. And we're on CBS this morning, which other goes like Gail King, who's Oprah's best friend. <laughs> um, cool. So, um, yeah, do you guys want to meet? Like, what's the next one? What yeah, so we'll talk, um, we'll ask some questions about this and then we can do. So, do you guys have questions about that? Um, are you done shooting or are you going to? So we're, we're actually continuing on. We're going to have like an, an end 2.0, if you will. We want to create a relationship genome project to extend that to blind couples, step couples, Indian couples, and these like, different languages to persuasions in the past. Create the most amazing relationship and fortune for you you've ever experienced. Plus, okay. continue to build on that. And, from, and that's, that comes from what the city is doing brand is creating an experience that you rethink and like you feel like there's more growth in the end. And so that's the time for the different types of couples and I think like if you look at the polygamous, the polyamorous couple, super attractive, um, they're just super hot and they will have sex outside of the relationship which is very exciting when you read it on paper but then when you watch the high school couple, um, you completely can view them in different contexts and the, 
the, what you get out of those sound classes, I think is valuable in a different way. So a deaf couple, um, simply based on the fact that they communicate in a different way, I think will inform us kind of with new content, and that will also affect the interactivity. And are you guys, how are you guys going to handle the launch of the 2.0? Is it going to be the same site, or how are you, what, are, what is your plan for that? We're just going to keep adding stuff to it, and because we've got the eyeballs, we'll chase them down. Um, we're also appearing at a bunch of film festivals. Um, we're at IFA at the end of November in the Adopt Lab thing, so we're also experimenting with live performative versions of this. Um, we have a game experience, a kind of gallery experience, and then a technology experience with biometric bracelets and stuff. So finding new ways again to take those rules that are out there and take an audience and stick them in the middle of the conversation. Um, no, I'm going to be just an so sorry, this is boring. Uh, most interactive documentaries are like super long, and the creators like are hoping that people are going to spend like, hours on their site. As you know, for internet use, that's pretty unrealistic. How did you guys avoid that? I mean, what blew me away about this was it was like a very internet like specific experience, right? Like I, I, I landed through the ceiling in the middle of. I mean, that metaphor was awesome, but it's very tempting. When you're working, you know, when you're working on a project, to like put more stuff in. How did you bring yourself back to make that experience 90 seconds of process? Can't do it for any kid who is. But um, that, I mean, for me, I think we probably have two different answers. I would say, you know, there's um, banner ads can be beautiful, and um, there's something about this set that works for the internet and isn't the best rendition of the films in a vacuum. No, but is it something that people actually took home and played? Like the game experience has nothing to do with the films, but has everything to do about the experience. So I think this is no longer a film. It's an experience. But for, for me, and our team comes from a deeper level for why we began to create this community and want our attention to that. And what we're trying to spread is just reflecting how we're in a unique period of time right now, due to a number of factors, technology, those kind of gender equality and, and like changing technology, changing state of us, that the way we relate to one another is fundamentally changing. Our, the difference between the way our grandparents relate to that of our great grandparents or grandchildren is totally different. And because of that story, how do we tell that story? How do we keep those experiences? It's not necessarily in the 90 minute movie. It's not that might not be the best format, best carrier to, to create that experience to tell that story. And as a filmmaker, we recognize that. We're like, okay, so what is it? We have a great experience since how do we do that? And so like interactive that's why like, when we're discussing, one of the things we discuss and learn is like interactive documentary. And I always come from film work, it's like, no, it's not even called documentary. Because people think 90 minutes, let's call it something else. And they the point was like, I recall I was like, well documentary they know, like basically they know that it is. it's like real people talking. And that's value when we have very little attention. So I think that right now it's been that same skin coming out and creating new space and we're all aware of that. Like, okay, well then there's new definitions. And I get I predict like no question in five years to eight, no question, you will walk on the subway and you will see an advertisement right next to True Detector and right next to whatever of who you know uh, HBO pitching an experience like this. It'll be a two and a half, three hour, five hour experience and it's gonna be a new format. It won't be episodic in the sixty minutes or ninety minutes. It's gonna be something like this that has multiple experiences within it. You know, I get a customized cut, I can yeah, I can watch and I can play this at home. I think there'll be a new format that I kind of want that's not even because this is like a three act structure. You know, there is a story there. And I think one thing like Brian Fountain and his uncle agree, like there are this is not groundbreaking technology, but it's a groundbreaking content experience. Groundbreaking might be a sharp word, but um, because <laughs> you know what I'll go ahead and say. Um, but because we could have done again like a more immersive, truly interactive thing. People were doing more intense um, choose your own adventure stuff, but that wasn't appropriate for here. Just like a longer cut wasn't appropriate for here. Any plans on monetizing it, and how would you do that? Yeah. Don't tell them. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that's definitely like a possibility, but it has to be in line with like the message we have, right? And we're looking into that possibility. And that's also, again, this is like an exploration and kind of setting the stage. Um, it was a proof of concept, it totally worked. 
bajillion people look at it. Um, had we started that and said, well, we're going to charge you a game, nobody would look at it, right? Um, so I think that's also part of the exploration. And how do you, with a different brief, how do you get the pain into the experience? And it would just be a completely different thing. I mean, one way, one way we can monetize this is creating using what we've learned from this trade, this experience that's more for a brand. And I don't, I'm not sure if we, where we stand in terms of monetization of that. But this, the end itself, or the skin deep itself, is a for profit brand. So we will utilize that to make profit. We can get a better at that code. Sorry, one last thing about that. No one's collaborated with Skin Deep on this, it's an advertising agency. Um, and the group that I work in um, does stuff like this because we do everything for money. And um, this is a great opportunity to continue to explore what we call stories. Um, because a lot of the time we do try to um, attack problem with story first, as opposed to what's this leading end technology, how can we use it? What's a cool Oculus Rift idea? No, like what's a really crazy way to get in the middle of an interesting relationship? And the Oculus Rift needs to be there. It needs to be there. So this definitely all comes back to my issue. Anybody else?